welcome to my channel and welcome to another video where I probably butcher the Swedish language multiple times. I apologize in advance, but today we're gonna do some IKEA hacks. Today I'm gonna start off with a set of DIY hacks that are a little bit more neutral toned, lots of wood pieces going on there, just because I thought that they'd all fit together really nicely. So without further ado, let's jump in and I'll share some of the hacks with you. So the first thing I wanna share with you is this, which I've been keeping on my dressing table. And this is a little jewelry box and it was so, so simple to make. So for this piece, you're going to need, well, let's see if I can read this. You will need the Clifta bread basket. This is three pounds in the UK. And you'll also need two of the Hofsta frames. These are also three pounds for the size that's 13 by 18, which is the perfect size for the bread basket. So I'm starting with my two frames. They look a little bit like this and I'm pulling the backs off of them and taking all of the bits from the inside out for the time being. I'm keeping the matting from the frame because we're gonna use this as a template in a minute. And then we're taking the bread basket and using the bread basket to cut out a nice big piece of cane from the top to go in the top of the jewelry box. So here I am using that piece of cardboard as the template and just using a pencil, tracing lightly over it and then cutting it out with some scissors. I really love looped cane and woven cane pieces, but finding a piece of cane like this from Amazon for an 18 by 18 piece is like 15 pounds and I don't have any craft stores near me, so I'm making do and I thought this was a kind of a cute little small project that anyone could make. So with that done, I then put the piece of plastic back into the top frame and I used a little bit of hot glue and ran it along the inside of the frame to keep the plastic in place. You can use any kind of glue that you want that would stick the two together, but hot glue is great because it dries very quickly. I then slotted in my piece of woven cane and this fit perfectly. I didn't need to add any glue, but if you want to, you can. And just to reinforce it, I also added this piece of plastic back into the frame that held it into place. And once again, I used my hot glue gun on this just to make sure it wasn't going anywhere. And for my second frame, which makes up the bottom of the box, I cut out a piece of scrapbook paper to the same size as the frame because I wanted to add a little bit of something else. As you can see for this one as well, I'm only using the piece of clear plastic at the bottom and then also the piece of scrapbook paper. So once again, I'm using my hot glue gun to make sure everything's going to stick firmly in place. And then with the paper stuck down, it was time to arrange my box. So here's the bottom piece and the top piece fits really snug on top like so. I've got these two old hinges from my old Pat West box. If you've seen my recent flift, flift, flip, <laughs> thrift flip video. And just to keep them in place for a second, I'm using a tiny piece of hot glue, just a tiny, tiny bit, just so that I can screw the nails in without them like falling all over the place. Um, I just used a tiny screwdriver and screwed them all into place so that we had a hinge on the box. And last but not least for a very clean finish, don't forget to use some pliers to pry out those little clips that hold the pictures in place. You know the ones I'm talking about. It makes all the difference. And then for the final reveal, here is the finished cane jewelry box. You can obviously store whatever you want in this. It's the perfect size for a few jewelry pieces or some stationery. And I'm really, really pleased with how this one turned out. I think it's my favorite DIY that I've made in quite some time. The next piece is something I have always wanted to make, but I've never found the right size of basket, whether it's in the charity shop or Ikea. So when I went in recently and I saw this one amongst lots of others that could have worked perfectly well, this is the Jill... I'm not gonna pronounce it. I'm gonna put it on screen. This basket is 12 pounds and it's so cute as a basket by itself, but I'm gonna show you how to make it into a hanging lampshade. And if you want to make this plug into the wall, you might also need the Strahler cable light set. So let's get into it. So here's the basket. And what I like most about it is the looped kind of scallop looking detail at the top. I can't wait to turn this into a lampshade. So as you can see, I'm starting by peeling off all the stickers and then I'm using this light cable, which I'll talk a bit more about later. 
and I'm just placing the adapter that I used on top to draw around it to get the perfect sort of circular shape to be able to thread it through. Now I'll be honest, cutting into it was a bit of a nightmare. I thought I had more footage of it than I did, but I had to use a craft knife and then a like junior hacksaw and it just, it was a bit of a nightmare. It's very thick, so do be careful. In the end, I tried to use this little saw once I've made it cut. I was able to go around the edges and try and pry it open. I know this looks very messy, but I have been hacking away at this now for about 15 minutes. <laughs> And it's finally big enough to have my adapter fit through so i just have to go around and tidy the edges up it's not really looking like a circle anymore but um it will be fine in the end a large circular drill bit probably would have been the best for this project but i left my drill in the back of my nan's car so i may do anyway after loads of hacking i ended up using some tiny nail scissors to trim all those excess pieces off and as you can see my adapter fits really snug into the hole which isn't really a circular hole but it's something <laughs> so i then screwed on my light cable which looks like this to see how I make the light cable, I've done this on my channel a few times so I don't want to bore any of the original subscribers on here. I will leave it linked down below so you can take a look if you'd like. It's really simple, it's kind of like making a friendship bracelet, you just keep tying a knot continuously all the way down. As you can see I've used a really nice thick rope and it gets this kind of twisted effect. It's so easy. Yeah, this light cable does the rounds on my channel, but you don't have to make it fancy. You can just use the Strahler light cord as it is. And if you want to use this bulb, which is also from Ikea, you're gonna need to use that adapter. And this is the Lanom bulb, which is six pounds. So anyway, with all of that done and pieced together, I was able to string this on the wall using a command strip clip. And it hangs really nicely above a bedside table or you could even use this on a permanent light fixture as well if you'd like to. But there we go, basket lampshade complete. And last but not least, I here have a brand new rug for £1.50. I think it's called the Cleages. Cleages. <laughs> And you know I'm a sucker for those cheap rugs that they sell in there, so I had to buy it and turn it into a cushion. So that's just what I did. So here is the new rug in all of its glory. The first thing I did was fold it down the middle like so, and I'm going to cut those rounded edges off by just cutting the short sides. I'm keeping the detailing on the long sides because I really like the stitching, but I really don't like these curved edges. So we're gonna cut them off, and once that's done, you should have something that looks a bit like this. To sew this piece together, you can use a thick needle and some thread, or you can run it through a sewing machine. So I'm doing a bit of both here just to show you that you can, but you're gonna need a thick needle on your sewing machine too, because this is very, very, very stiff fabric. So I started by going down that long side and then turning the piece inside out like so. Once that's done, you should have some kind of tube looking thing. And then I'm gonna add a piece of trim on either side. I have this tassel trim lying around in my studio office -y space and I just wanted to tuck this into the ends so I had it kind of poking out of the side. So once that was tucked in place, I ended up using a needle and thread to sew this together because I didn't want to get it stuck in my sewing machine basically. And I thought it would be easier to do it this way for when I close the piece up. But before closing the piece up, we're gonna need to stuff it first. So I'm cutting open an old cushion to get the inside filling out of it. I always find this is a bit cheaper than buying a bag of polyfill. No offense, polyfill but you can be expensive. And once that was suitably fluffy, all I had to do was close up the open end, which once again, I did by hand. And as you can see, I'm really struggling here. Oh my goodness, it was, it was a very tough piece of fabric, but we got there in the end. And this is how it turned out. I really like this kind of neutral beigey color. And although I like using a lot of pastels in my house, I thought it might be nice to show you something that's a little bit different for once. So that is everything for today's video. I promise you that is the last time I'm gonna mispronounce a Swedish word 
for today but i did pick up quite a few things in ikea so if you'd like to see another ikea hacks video i've got some diys tucked up my sleeve for next time so do stay tuned and if you make any of these i'd love to see them so please do tag me on instagram and show me what you make over there my instagram is at hermione chantel and i'd love to see and with all of that being said happy hacking i'll see you next time bye